Paul Strand made a, made a huge impact in our involvement in youth hockey. And since then you've seen our numbers increase with the amount of registered USA Hockey players. And again, that bucks a national trend. And, and, and that's a key thing, you know, for, for our fan base to grow, kids need to pick up a stick and play at some level. You know, he's had the full gamut from, from little kids to, to older kids, you know, coaching them and then, and then just sort of dealing with the tryouts and, and the issues that go along with that youth hockey kind of over the course of the season. So uh, certainly a lot of experience with, with younger kids. The growth of youth hockey the last five years, when I've been with the Carolina Hurricanes organization, has been tremendous. And it not only speaks to individuals like Paul Strand, but the volunteers, the parents, uh, the players. It's been a team effort throughout the community. We have a, a tremendous youth organization here and, and I'm very happy to be a part of it. It's one of those things that I, I can see some growth for the next 10, 15, 20 years that um, could be unprecedented you know, throughout the, the South you know, or in the United States in terms of developing kids to play hockey and, and do what I have grown up loving to do. I got asked to, uh, to come out to a local board meeting of the Raleigh Youth Hockey Association and, and they, they explained that, uh, that the members of the Carolina Hurricane staff were going to be there and uh, discussing a learn to play program that possibly had you know, the Carolina Hurricanes involved and, and things like that. And it, was, it was a perfect, uh, perfect timing to meet Paul uh, because we were coming out of the lockout and we were going to add a new position back, a position that was in a few years ago, but uh, kind of gone without for a few years, and that was the youth and amateur hockey coordinator position. You know, there there was definitely a desire, I think, by the you know the Hurricanes to want to help the youth hockey program grow, and and you could see that. But to get out there and, and to to try to you know to initiate that change, you could see there was some difficulties with them wanting to do that and actually you know take that step. And I was sitting there and. And uh, it was about an hour into this conversation, and finally I was said, I just kind of spoke up. I asked if I could say something, and, and he, you know, he kind of politely asked to speak, and so I, he says, "Hey, I'm Paul Strand," and you know, he wasn't as refined as he is now, and so he kind of came pretty hard with his criticism of, of where we should be. And you know, their reaction, you know, they were they were very polite back to me, considering how I had said things, but. You know, afterwards, uh, Doug, uh, Doug Worf, um, I talked to a little bit on the way out, and, and so I caught him in the parking lot afterwards, and I said, hey, I said, I've been trying to catch up with you. Jason was still with me, so it might have been a little intimidating for Paul. Uh, but I said, I like where your head is. I like the way you're looking at things. I like, you know, the expertise you bring. You missed it completely on this and this and this, but you're really good on this and this and this, and, uh, and, and, I, and I thought he handled that well. This I think was in February or March uh, of the lockout year, and and then I just I got an email uh, about two weeks before the lockout ended, and uh, I think they kind of knew it was coming to an end and things like that. And I got an email, as, you know, asking if I'd like to come down and talk about a possible position. And then from there we we had him come out to uh, we had summer camp just uh, not too long after that, and he came out and that was kind of his trial run. He was a summer camp counselor and. Uh, and that was when it was pretty easy to see Paul's talent. And that's kind of how it, how it was. And, you know, I never, I, back in February, March, I never, I never thought that that's what it was going to come out. I basically just wanted some of this fight to end and uh, for kids, to, kids to start, you know, seeing some growth and some potential. Wow. Well, I mean, the earliest memory is told to me from my mom, who was my coach, and, uh, and growing up in BC. And uh, she, all she, you know, reminds me of is that I used to sit on the ice and um, pout and whine and complain until I finally got taken to the bench. And you know, slowly I started to develop. And, and when I was really young, you know, and starting to play in, in the in the house leagues, I, I don't remember really liking, you know, hockey like that. Um, my brothers and, and uh, sisters had played, and of course my two older brothers would, would drag me out, and I slowly started to develop the, the love for the game. And by the time I got about 13, 14, you get, you get a little bit better at something, and you start to enjoy it a lot more. And...
And, and that's kind of like the evolution of, of how I started playing hockey. It wasn't a love right from the start, but slowly I, I got a little bit better at it and I enjoyed it. The minor leagues um, is a cocoon anyways. Of, of It's, it's kind of like these little mini uh, <laughs> Uh, Canadian, you know, groups that are together. So it's not it, you, you're still insulated from, you know, the, the area. There, there were some people who, you know, you, you really, you know, that left an impression on you. Their, their understanding of the game and, and you know, what you could teach them or you know what they, they expected from you as a, as a professional athlete. That you know, in terms of friendship and the, those kind of things, they were, they were the, the best parts of. I think the minor leagues, the stuff that I remember mostly. The games are one thing, but remembering those friendships and still having them to this day are, are the big thing. I got to a place in the minor leagues where it finally just wasn't fun to play anymore. I made the choice that, you know, I'm going to, you know, take a look at this head injury and, and you know, sit out a little bit. It, it was tough, but it was immediately replaced by coaching, which was, you know, what I really like to do. You know, he puts in a lot of hours, you know, and dedicates a lot of time. It's really not you know, any personal motive for him to, to be doing that uh, other than he loves to coach and he loves to give kids opportunity to be successful, so. The optimism of what we can do, bringing the coaches together, uh, the competitive level, you know, and having a lot of people involved that that are starting to, you know, that started to trust each other, that started, the coaches started to, you know, trust the administrators and things like that, which, you know, you, now you're building a program that can expand each year instead of worrying about, you know, where the kid's going to come from or, or, you know, how we're going to do this. Now you're expanding and you're making it better. You know, as I said numerous times, it's, it's kind of a, a tough position to have and a lot of times it's a thankless position to have, but, uh, you know, he goes about doing that business in, in, uh, in the right way and, and trying to benefit the kids, putting them first and foremost and, and no sort of personal agenda. It's all about the kids and giving them that opportunity to have success. And uh, you know we're starting to see some of those rewards now with some of the kids getting picked out of here, and I think it'll uh, it'll happen more and more often as as time goes on. What you're seeing is you're seeing more kids staying in the game. They're not just quitting because they get to 15 and 16 and they don't think, well, there's no. You're seeing that the competitive level is there and it's worth it to go to the rink and and things like that. But for an organization and the time and effort that's put it in you, you, you know that 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 visible in you know. Um, reward of getting to a college and doing you know getting a division one scholarship is is you know um, the biggest part of the reason why you're coaching seeing the credibility that has come to to our market uh, internationally when it comes to hockey has been great to see um, but a lot of that paul will not take the credit like he should when you see these kids getting drafted in the ushl when you see them going off to prep schools and boarding schools a lot of that is because of the relationships that Paul has and that Paul connects coaches to. Anyone that's played in youth, whether it's youth sports, whether it's in theater, whether it's any type of club that you're involved in, you know that impact. If you have a coach, if you have a mentor, that impact goes beyond that arena. So Paul takes most pride in the fact that he's not only impacted kids on the ice, but that naturally has an impact off the ice as well. And, that, and that's why he does this, and it's not, you know, a lot of people can say that's what they want to do, but that's what he actually does. And uh, you talk to parents, you talk to people within this organization, you talk to people in the youth and the community, uh, that's one of the first things that's going to come to mind is the positive impact he's had on their child. You know, I don't know if there's anything else that I would I would enjoy doing. Um, I'm very realistic that you know you you have to be doing stuff that you love. Uh, the you know I, I don't know if I could go work in a bank just to work in a bank um, and things like that, or just to make money. I I think that. I'm very aware. I think that's why I decided to play in the minor leagues for so long and say, okay, well, I'm, I mean, I'm 32 and, and I'm still playing in there and I would have played longer because uh, I just, I'm very aware that you, you got to do what you like to do in order to, to enjoy life. And I really enjoy coaching and I really enjoy being around the kids and teaching them hockey and, and that kind of stuff, teaching them life, life skills. So I have never given it any thought saying, okay, well, maybe it's time for me to go do something else. It never entered my mind.